it is okay. I can smoke stogies in my house because I'm a stud. I'm ballsy. I don't take no shit from anyone. I smoke my stogie anywhere I want. I don't have to find a hideout place like you. <laughs> So recently I watched Terminator Dark Fate with a friend for Patreon. May I ask what you are? No. I, I respect that, I would not ask what your gender is anymore. <laughs> you are stunning and brave and I will wait for you to finish talking to I can speak. <laughs> and I really started reflecting on the portrayal of Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator character since the first movie up until Dark Fate. How the justification of bringing him back for every movie had been a gradual deterioration of his character in the first movie. And just how saying his Terminator character comes off of an assembly line is kind of the worst justification for his recasting in every movie. Because after seeing where the Terminator franchise has gone over the years has been very telling of studios wanting to bring in a new generation to the Terminator franchise as well as pleasing the fans by shoving in what they're expecting. Something that has poisoned Hollywood for the past two decades is this disgusting obsession with soft rebooting everything. We can't make a full reboot because that'll piss off the fan base. We can't make a proper legit sequel because we can't bank on a new generation seeing the older films. Can't make anything new or fresh as a part of that universe in case fans old or new don't accept it. Every single Terminator sequel went through that overthinking process. The first Terminator was a small, gritty, ground level movie with a massive concept and solid characters to invest in. Terminator 2 threw a massive budget into that world and gave us dazzling special effects and visual effects, gigantic action set pieces, flipped the script on all of the established characters, and was a massive blockbuster. But unfortunately, all Terminator sequels onwards followed Terminator 2's template and never returned to the established tone of the original. But what this video will mainly focus on is Arnold Schwarzenegger's over importance to this franchise and how his compulsory involvement has not only suffocated the creativity of the sequels, but also slowly destroyed the integrity of the title character he played in the original movie that made him the superstar he is today. Seven years after The Terminator took the world by storm, the demand for a sequel grew more and more. In this time, James Cameron worked on Aliens and The Abyss, while Schwarzenegger exploded as an action movie star. Arnold would constantly contact James Cameron to discuss when they would both return to make a sequel. When Cameron was finally ready to return and tell the next chapter in the story, he was met with one challenge, figuring out how Arnold could return as the title character. He died in the first one. With the simple setup of showing John Connor hack an ATM, as well as a high-tech security system, then reprogramming a T-800 in the future isn't too far of a stretch. That being said, before we take the brutal killing machine from the previous movie and turn him into a wisecracking father figure, this movie takes its absolute time building towards that. The physical concentration from Schwarzenegger as well as James Cameron's solid direction still maintains a good consistency from the previous movie. This is the same killing machine except reprogrammed to be a protector. This is officially the only and last time this twist can ever be done to this character. And when I say twist, this is a twist. If you ignore all sequels and just focus on one and two, turning Arnold's character into the good guy wasn't destined to be the gimmick. It was because he was such a massive star at that point that by not having him in the sequel would have been such a bad business move. So Cameron played around with the idea that the T-800 has come off an assembly line. And for some reason that assembly line still grows the specific outer layer of a ripped gap tooth Austrian bodybuilder. Terminator 2 ends with a nice closed ending. But with Arnold's final scene descending towards the molten steel should have been the very last time we see his character. What a lovely goodbye. By this time, Schwarzenegger had become one of the biggest stars on the planet. This was a perfect time to wrap up him playing the Terminator. As Schwarzenegger began doing more comedies and mostly playing the good guys in his films, applying that to the Terminator should have been the only time this was done. But this is where T2 still feels like a proper sequel and a continuation. It was the villain of the previous movie being reprogrammed as a good guy by an adult John Connor, then sent back in time to protect his younger self, who was essentially Bart Simpson. Only James Cameron knew how to make all that work. Sure, Terminator 2 brought in a lot of humor and lighthearted moments, but it still retained enough of a serious tone to still stay invested in the story. The intensity of Sarah Connor trying to amp herself up to kill Miles Dyson is more stressful than any scene in any other sequel that followed. As Schwarzenegger was starting to shred the violent action man stereotype that he'd been playing and having more fun with his projects. <laughs> Boy, boy! Ah! 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 Ah!
Lock it up. So a massive long story short, the Terminator rights were all over the place following T2. Companies went bankrupt, Arnold kept pushing James Cameron to buy the rights with him, other people bought the rights under James Cameron's nose, Arnold didn't want to return unless James Cameron directed, who was all pissy after the deal swapping, and ultimately exhausted the idea of writing and directing Terminator 3 due to moving on as a filmmaker. After Arnold refusing to return for T3, Cameron eventually told him to just do it if they paid him a boatload. And they did. 30 million dollars just to return and play the character that made him famous as a joke. Talk to the hand. No. Already when he gets his clothes, it's so bad. Instantly played for laughs. Awkward sped up footage. Gets his sort of T2 motorcycle outfit from a male stripper, which you then have to keep in mind for the entirety of the movie. Then walks into a truck just filled with, remember Arnold from T2? Glasses on the dash, shotgun behind him, as well as keys in the visor reference. Arnold is way more clunky and goofier. So messy compared to how stoic and still he was in T2. The way he delivers his lines matched with his jerky movements. Relax. Relax. Arnold is losing his restraint to act more subtle as a robot. But the flip side to this is implying that the Terminator is super heavy. In the first movie when the Terminator is fighting Ginger's boyfriend, he manages to get the Terminator off his feet. Now with his superhero status, he can throw a CGI at the Terminator into a bunch of toilet stalls, uh, getting shoved through a bunch of buildings barely causes any damage. Getting hit by a truck in the first movie rips half of his face skin off. I'm an obsolete design. Yeah, declaring that very early on. Hey, are you gonna pay for that? Talk to the hand. And this was the moment it all went downhill. The consistency with Terminator 1 is officially over. Anger is more useful than despair. Basic psychology is among my subroutines. Speaking of which, after two movies of perfectly playing a robot covered in human tissue, here he just acts like a robot. Like borderline Robocop, without being smart. In fact, every time an action scene breaks out, it just feels like a schlock Schwarzenegger action movie, which betrays the tone of the first two movies, which action scenes were never silly or dumb. Lastly, they write in an actual excuse as to why Arnold has to match the Terminator from Terminator 2. I was selected for the emotional attachment he felt towards my model number due to his boyhood experiences. This aided in my infiltration. So in the post-apocalypse, this T-800 wore a leather motorcycle outfit and tricked him with Chill out, dickwad. Um, excuse me, it's actually the T-850? Yeah, thanks, nerd culture. So much difference! T-800 and T-850. Never confusing that important difference ever again. The levity is good. It relieves tension and the fear of death. Yeah. What's even better is when he's reprogrammed by the TX, he's emoting. Desire is irrelevant. I am a machine. Just look at these dumb faces. This didn't feel like the actual Terminator character. It just felt like a celebrity cameo. And speaking of cameos. Daniel uh, Cordery? Cordery? Uh, yeah, uh, your buddy M just uh, wanted me to give you a shout out to your YouTube channel. Ah! YouTube channel, uh, Corderi FX. I hope I'm saying it right. Corderi. Corderi? Corderi. Corderi FX, man, on YouTube. Um, uh, maybe I'll, I should go check that out, dude. Oh, not that one. A Terminator cameo. Shortly after the release of Terminator 3, Arnold became the governor of California, and he did not star in another film until his second term was finished in 2011, except for a cameo in The Expendables. Not much to say on this one, seeing as Schwarzenegger wasn't actually in the film, but I do give this movie props for actually getting back to the T-800 being a bad guy for even just a moment. Also give it points for sticking to the continuity of Arnold's longer hair in the original. In the first movie, he jumps over a car that's on fire and it burns off his hair and eyebrows. Then suddenly, that defined his hairdo for every single sequel and his entire life. But like, it's still an okay-ish looking CGI model. Something's always off about a CGI Arnold. For someone who already acts strange, adding the uncanny valley to an already uncanny valley makes an unvalley canny. Genesis doesn't count because it's a copy and paste job and Dark Fate doesn't count because they cheated by having him in slow motion with sunglasses. But anyway, let's look at Arnold's big unnecessary return. 
Arnold's back, baby. Back to the reprogrammed good guy Terminator. Again. Although this time they won't explain it. I was programmed to protect Sierra Kana. Yeah, programmed by who? Those files have been erased. Oh, that's convenient. Whoever sent him, they don't want us to know. Thanks, JJ Abrams. I love sequel bait. Stops me from enjoying a single story that has a natural conclusion. Well, we have to find out what they do next time. Straight away, the overimportance of Schwarzenegger becomes evident in the new recasting and bloated budget. It's reboot, sequel, soft reboot time. Everyone gets recasted. Sarah Connor, Carl Reese, the T-1000. John Connor doesn't matter anymore because uh, so much John Connor. But Arnold gets to return. We are meant to accept that this movie is an alternate version of Terminator 1, but we have to look at garbage recasting and the big famous actor from the original movie becomes an old grandpa. Why not recast Arnold? Or bring back Linda Hamilton and Michael Bean and give them the CGI de-age treatment. Oh, that's too expensive. Why not recast everyone? Keep it consistent and keep the budget down. Thanks to Terminator 3 opening the dumb humor door, the humor in this movie is now AIDS for morons. Weapons, supplies, tactical gear, including pens. Calories. Is that a joke? Can he make jokes? Hello, Calories. It is nice to meet you. Who finds this funny? Who finds this funny? You are nothing but a relic from a deleted timeline. Oh yeah, Terminators trash talk each other now. You won't be needing any clothes. I've been waiting for you. Imagine if the T-800 and the T-1000 spoke to each other. Just to hammer it into your head that old man Terminator isn't useless, they keep making him say this dumb phrase. I'm old, not obsolete. Old, not obsolete. Old, but not obsolete. Not yet. But don't worry, just in case you were hoping for a return to form, that smile, that fucking smile. There was a reason it was cut from the Terminator 2 theatrical cut. When the T850 Terminator kept reiterating that John and Catherine were future spouses, this one just does it all the time. And you should be able to mate with Cal Reese in this timeline. Okay, we're not having this conversation again. Did you mate? Oh, can you just not say the word mate to me again, like, ever? The Terminator is now a puppy. We went from this. <laughs> to this. Sarah Connor, seatbelt. Ah, jokes with the Terminator. I love jokes with the Terminator. Final drive, get out. Nice to see you, get out. As much as I respect James Cameron, most of the blame has to go to him for telling these filmmakers how to justify the T-800 being old. But then they took that and added in this puppy element to make wusses go, Aww. Like even if I had accepted this concept of the T-800 being old, I would rather the Terminator come across as crabby and quiet. Cyberdyne Systems model Gran Torino. Five low. <laughs> Too slow. Who's <laughs> kidding? Bite me. That is a very immature response. <laughs> Another frustrating element is when they make the Terminator seem like a dumb man. Wait, you've been here before? I was able to infiltrate the work crews in this facility. You got a job in construction? Until I was laid off. I wonder how he screwed up and got fired. Was it from evil robot John Connor noticing that he's an obvious T-800 model with an Austrian accent and gap tooth and flat top? Magnetic rifle entry munition. I read about this on gunsandemo.com. Does a Terminator need to read articles about guns? Or can he just already know what exists and what he wants? The 12 gauge autoloader, the 45 long slide with laser siding. It's a brand new, we just got them in. Phased plasma rifle in a 40 watt range. Hey, just what you see, pal. The Uzi 9mm. You know your weapons, buddy. You can't do that. Wrong. This is now the moment we can't go back. Arnold playing the classic killing machine is now officially neutered. We didn't need this character arc. That is a meaningless gesture. Why hold on to someone when you know you must let them go? Kyle Reese, protect my Sierra. Do you feel it yet? You can't stop him! He'll wait for you, reach down her throat, and pull her fucking heart out! That's really disturbing, right? If the original is your favorite of the Terminator movies, does this just make you feel sick? Well, hold it in. Just when you thought this was the worst portrayal of the classic Terminator, then it's time to add in a splash of modern day politics. Just remember, there's no fate but what we make, sucker. 